Hello everyone, welcome to NG's Corner for Nurses. Hope all of you are doing well. In clinical practice, there are sets of evidence-based practices which we implement together to prevent or treat specific hospital acquired infections. Those sets of evidence-based practices are known as care bundles. So today our topic of discussion is care bundles. Let's start it. In this video, we will discover the concept of patient care bundles, how these bundles originated and benefits of using these care bundles and discussion of each care bundles. What are care bundles? Care bundles are a collection of evidence-based practices that are used together to improve care quality. These packages of care contribute to infection prevention, reduce unnecessary antibiotic prescribing, and may limit the development of antibiotic resistance in healthcare facilities. Commonly known patient care bundles are the bundles for prevention of central line associated bloodstream infections, bundles for prevention of catheter associated urinary tract infections, bundles for prevention of ventilator associated pneumonia, and bundles for prevention of surgical site infections. Now come to the history of care bundles. In the late 1990s and early years of this century, there was a surge of interest in using care bundles in critical care. Care bundles originated in 2001 with the Institute for Healthcare Improvement and the Voluntary Hospital Association as a part of the idealized design of the Intensive Care Unit Initiative. Bornholz and colleagues further describes bundles as a way of evaluating care qualities. Let's discuss the benefits of using care bundles. It enhances compliance to evidence-based quality process measures to improve patient care. It helps to create reliable and consistent care systems in hospital settings since they are simple, clear and concise create safer patient care environments, encourage goal-oriented care, and deal with areas of uncertainty by providing a pragmatic but consistent solution. Let's discuss the bundles. First is bundles for the prevention of central line associated bloodstream infections. Central lines are used commonly in intensive care units and in non-ICU populations such as dialysis unit, intraoperatively, and in oncology patients. Most hospital acquired bloodstream infections are associated with a central line. Central line associated bloodstream infections are responsible for excess mortality and morbidity, prolonged hospital stays, and increased costs. And these incidence is higher in developing countries. Implementation of central line insertion and maintenance bundles reduces the incidence of CLABSI in ICUs and non-ICU settings, notably in developing countries. So let's discuss the bundles for prevention of central line associated bloodstream infection. First is insertion bundle. Maximal sterile barrier precautions should be used like surgical mask, using sterile gloves, using caps, sterile gown and large sterile drape. Skin cleaning with alcohol based chlorhexidine. Then avoidance of the femoral vein for central venous access in adult patient and use of subclavian rather than jugular veins. Dedicated personnel for central line insertion and competencies training should be there, assessment should be there. Standardized insertion pack should be there 
availability of insertion guidelines including indication for central line use and use of checklists with trained observers and use of ultrasound guidance for insertion of internal jugular lines. Next coming to the maintenance bundle. Daily review of central line is necessity and prompt removal of unnecessary lines Disinfection prior to manipulation of the line, daily chlorhexidin washes, disinfect catheter hubs, ports, connectors, etc. before using the catheter, change dressing and disinfect the site with alcohol based chlorhexidin every 5 to 7 days and change earlier if soiled. Replace administration sets within 96 hours and immediately if used for blood products or lipids. Then ensure appropriate nurse to patient ratio in ICU that is 1 is to 2 or 1 is to 1. So these activities need to be integrated in multimodal approach including hand hygiene, clinician and nurse education and performance of surveillance and feedback of CLA, BSI rates. Next coming to the bundle for the prevention of catheter associated urinary tract infections. POTI is defined as a urinary tract infection in a patient with current urinary tract catheterization or who has been catheterized in the past 48 hours. Is the most common healthcare associated infection worldwide, resulting in increased costs, hospital stays, and su substantial morbidity. The majority of cases are considered to be avoidable with the implementation of infection prevention bundles. Let's see the insertion bundles. Prevent unnecessary catheterization. Choose catheters of appropriate size. Use sterile items and equipments. Aseptic catheter insertion and use closed drainage system. Next coming to maintenance bundle. Review the need for the catheter on a daily basis. Remove catheter promptly when no longer necessary. Use aseptic technique for daily catheter care. Don't break the closed drainage system. And if urine specimen required, take specimen aseptically via the sampling port. And these should be accompanied by a multimodal approach of hand hygiene, healthcare worker education and feedback of catheter use and potty rates. Next coming to the bundle for the prevention of ventilator associated pneumonia. Ventilator associated pneumonia defined as a new pneumonia occurring more than 48 hours after endotracheal intubation is a common and serious hospital acquired infection. It occurs in up to 20% of patients receiving mechanical ventilation and is associated with increased antibiotic use, length of hospitalization and healthcare costs. The mortality associated with ventilator associated pneumonia ranges from 20% to 50% and the attributable mortality is estimated at 13%. It has been estimated that over half the cases of ventilator associated pneumonia may be preventable with evidence based strategies with an impact on mortality. The following bundle of ventilator care processes have been shown to substantially reduce ventilator associated pneumonia rates. Elevate the head of the bed to between 30 and 45 degrees. Daily sedation interruption and daily assessment of readiness to extubate. Daily oral care with chlorhexidine prophylaxis for peptic ulcer disease, prophylaxis for deep vein thrombosis. And these interventions should be implemented together with the standard precautions and 
as well as adequate disinfection and maintenance of equipments and devices. Other components of the ventilator associated pneumonia bundle may include utilization of endotracheal tubes with subglottic secretion drainage only for the patients ventilated for longer than 24 hours and initiation of safe enteral nutrition within 24 to 48 hours of ICU admission. Next, coming to the bundle for the prevention of surgical site infection. Surgical site infections are infections that occur after the surgery at the incision site. It has been estimated that approximately half of surgical site infections are preventable. The following evidence-based interventions should be provided as a part of a bundle of care to prevent surgical site infections. First is administration of parenteral antibiotic prophylaxis. Antibiotic prophylaxis should be administered within 60 minutes prior to incision, including for caesarean section. Redosing is recommended for prolonged procedures and in patients with major blood loss or excessive burns. Patients should be washed with soap or an antiseptic agent within a night prior to surgery. Avoid hair removal. If necessary, use electric clippers. Use alcohol-based disinfectant for skin preparation in the operating room. Maintain intraoperative glycemic control with target blood glucose levels less than 200 mg per deciliter in patients with or without diabetes. Maintain perioperative normothermia, administer increased fraction of inspired oxygen during surgery and after extubation in the immediate post-operative period in patients with normal pulmonary function. The interventions above should be implemented with a multimodal package of infection prevention including hand hygiene, sterilization of surgical equipment and use of appropriate surgical attire and staff education and feedback. So this is all about care bundles. If you like this video then please put a like and share it with others. And for getting more videos like this, you can subscribe my YouTube channel and G's Corner for nurses. And for any queries or any suggestions, you are most welcome to comment. Thank you for listening.